Who is Jakati Khan? Jagati Khan, known as the Great Khan, or the Warhawk, was the Primarch of the White Scar's Space Marine Legion. Known for his secluded and fierce nature, the Khan was commonly overlooked and seen as a barbarian, but in truth was a highly cultured individual. Most of the records about him are from the White Scars, and as such can be subject to variety and unreliability. The Chaos Emissary to Lorgar called him the Warrior. It is said that Khan landed on a planet in the Segmentum Pacificus, named by the Imperium, Mundus Planus, or as the native population called it, Chagoris. It is a fertile world with wide, open green plains and tall white mountains and blue seas. At the time of the Great Crusade, the people had developed to a black powder stage. A census shows that the dominant empire was a well-organized aristocracy, which had conquered most of the planet with well-equipped and highly disciplined armies, maintaining armored horsemen and tight blocks of infantry. Their leader was the Palatine, and he won all of his battles with his great army. To the west of the Palatine's empire, was the Empty Quarter, a barren grassland with little resources and as such was never invaded. It was home to wandering tribes of vicious horsemen who fought each other for their ancestral lands. The Palatine would sometimes lead forces in to capture slaves or merely to hunt the tribesmen for fun. Khan's legacy began here. He was found by Ong Khan, leader of a small tribe who saw the Primarch as a gift from the gods. It is said that he had a fire in his eyes, the sign of a great warrior. He was hated by the other tribes because of his ability to see beyond the constant warfare on the steppes. It is said the most influential moment in his life was slaying of his father by the rival Kurad tribe. Khan, even as a young child, was the greatest warrior of the tribe and gathered troops to avenge the death of his father. They moved on the Kurye tribe and raised it to the ground, killing every man, woman, and child in a killing frenzy. Khan took the head of the enemy tribe leader and mounted it on his tent. This is what shaped him into a man of fierce honor, loyalty, and ruthlessness. From then on, he swore to end the fighting, unite all the people of the Steppes, and bring an end to brother fighting brother. He fought hundreds of battles against other tribes and defeated hunting packs sent by Palatine. Each tribe they conquered was absorbed into the Talaskars, and he made military service mandatory while splitting tribes up and merging them with others to remove tribal differences. His warriors were fiercely loyal to him, and he promoted from the ranks on merit and ability. Ten summers later, as the tribe moved to their winter settlements, the Primarch was traveling on a mountainside with a group of his followers. A vast avalanche pushed him and his group back down the mountain, killing the normal men. Jagati survived, but could not be get back up the mountain in time before the tribe moved on. Khan was caught by one of the Palatine's hunting bands. All that returned of that band was one mutilated rider with the head of the son of Palatine, who had accompanied the hunting band, and a note saying that the people of the Steppes were not his toys anymore. When the snows cleared, an enraged Palatine gathered a massive army and determined to march west to wipe the tribes from the face of the planet. He had, however, underestimated the power and ability of Khan and brought his usual highly disciplined army of heavily armored warriors. This proved to be his downfall as they could not catch the lightly armored tribesmen. The constant rain of arrows from the tribesmen took their toll on the tight ranks of the warriors, and eventually the tribesmen defeated the army of Palatine, who escaped back to his capital with the select few bodyguards. The rest of the army was slaughtered, almost to the last man. After the battle, the tribal elders gathered and announced that Jagadi Khan was now the great Khan of the whole land. It was during this time that Jagati met comrades who would serve with him for centuries to come as the Jin Shah, Hasik, and Tagarte. Khan now began the long process of conquering the rest of the planet. He gave cities two choices, surrender or be wiped out. Most surrendered, but many were destroyed utterly, wiped from the face of the planet. 
Eventually, they came to the place of Palatine, where he demanded the head of Palatine on a spike. He requested, was obliged, and he adorned his tent with his greatest conquest. In 20 years, he had conquered the largest empire in the world's history. He now had the problems of ruling the empire, not something he had originally wanted. His people had no wish to rule these new lands, only to carry on living in the old ways. The people dispersed back to a tribal existence, and Khan ruled over them with all his generals by his side. Six months later, the emperor arrived, and Khan knew that once this man could fulfill his dream to unite all of the stars above them in one mighty empire. In front of all his generals, he dropped to one knee and pledged his service to the emperor. He was given command of the 5th Legion of Space Marines. Upon taking command of his new legion, known by this point as the Star Hunters, Jagati sought to assimilate the new, mostly Terran troops into Tragorian culture and tactics, while his new recruits from his homeworld were being planned. The Legion's tactics were completely overhauled to emphasize little but pure speed and maneuver. After the battle against the Nephilim, Hode, and Star Hunters became the White Stars. Jagati Gan gained a fierce reputation during the Great Crusade, and particularly on the Ulanor Crusade, but mostly kept himself safe friendships with Horus and Magnus the Red. Conversely, he became detested by Primarchs such as Fulgrim. Despite the fact that Horus felt that Khan was the most likely to join him, overall remaining loyal as Primarchs, Jagati, in fact, never intended to switch allegiances and stay true to his father. However, he did receive conflicting astropathic message as to what had transpired in the Esfin system, and decided to initially hold back his forces under he can determine the true nature of things. When Rogel Dorn sent a plea for all remaining loyal Astartes forces to make their way to Terra, Khan followed suit, reluctantly leaving the nearby Space Wolves to fend for themselves against the Alpha Legion, while also ignoring calls by Horus to attack his brother, Lehman Russ. The Khan, most of all, sought answers for what could have led to this bloodshed before he would take any side in the conflict. However, for a time, the White Scars became bogged down against orcs and warp storms in the Chondak system as part of an elaborate trap by the Alpha Legion. Jagati eventually managed to break the Alpha Legion blockade and made his way to the source of all these troubles to investigate it for himself. At Prospero, the Khan and his men found no clear answers of sp or space wolves as had been reported, only ruins and the ghosts of slain thousand sons. Eventually, the Khan confronted a projection of Magnus the Red. Magnus implored his brother and former friend to finally choose a side in the rebellion and discuss what both hoped to gain from the Great Crusade, but in the end, the Khan shattered the shade with his sword. Shortly after, Martorian, Primarch of the Death Guard, also appeared on Prospero and tried to convince his brother to join with them. Jagati refused by another offer, stating that while the Emperor is a tyrant, Horus had become a slave to the warp and had attempted to manipulate him to join his own ends. This time, the Khan's choice came to a duel. The two, prim the two Primarchs battled fairly evenly, though Jagati was faster and Martorian had greater endurance. Eventually, when the White Scars and Death Guard fleets began to clash in space, Martorian withdrew. Meanwhile, in space, the failure in Matorian's plan became apparent. During his time on Prospero, the Khan was faced with an attempted pro Horus coup by two of his own commanders, Hasik and Torgum Khan. It was through the efforts on Shibin Khan that it failed. For the next four years, Jakati and his scars wage a brutal, attrition hit-and-run campaign against the traitor lines, but with the road to Terra blocked by enemy fleets and warp storms, he could not reach the Emperor. Following the loss of his close friend and subordinate, Jin Shah, in the Battle of the Kilium Gate, Jagati became determined to forge a path home where he believed his destiny lay. Upon finding the dark glass artifact, the white scars were cornered by their pursuers, and as Jakati prepared to settle his score with Matorian on the face of certain doom, Targute sacrificed himself to the device to open a portal into the webway. Refusing to allow 
Yusuge sacrificed be for nothing, the Khan chose escape over honor and fled for Motorian. Once inside the webway, Chikadi's ship, Lance of Heaven, became boarded by demons and the Khan slew the keeper of the secrets, Manshuya Rakashai. Thanks to the efforts of Reveal Arada, the White Scar's fleet was able to navigate the webway and reappear over Terra. On Terra, Jagadi Khan met with Rogel Dorn, Lehman Russ, Sanguinius, and Malkador the Sigilite to discuss their war strategy. The Khan disapproved of Dorn's defensive approach to the war and urged a swift attack on Horus's forces. He agreed to a degree with Lehman Russ, who was preparing to leave Terra and face Horus aboard the Vengeful Spirit directly. Jagadi Khan, along with Sanguinius, later appeared at the Battle of Beta Garmin, though over a month late due to difficult warp travel. The Khan immediately took to organizing hit-and-run strikes throughout the Beta Garmin war zone. However, the Loyalists were ultimately outmaneuvered by Horus and Sanguinius, and the Khan agreed that Dorne's gambit at Beta Garmin had reached its limit and it was time to return to Terra. During the final phase of the Solo War, Jagadi dispatched his scars to above and below the or orbital disk of the Soul System in an attempt to counter flanking assaults by the traitors. During the clear portion of the battle for Soul, he expressed his belief that Horus had failed and that they had already bought enough time to allow the Robut Gulliman to arrive with reinforcements. During the siege of Terra, Jagadi Khan was initially forbidden from venturing outside the walls by Rogel Dorn, something the Khan refused to abide by. Jagadi, in particular, resented abandoning the large amounts of Imperial Army conscripts outside the palace to their fate, as well as lack of proactive defense strategy. Later, during the first traitor Astartes assaults upon the outer post trenches through the palace, Jagadi led the White Scar's jet bike charge from the Eternity Wall. They swept through the traitor ranks with Jagadi slaying over 40 Death Guard personally. However, he was eventually forced from his bike and overwhelmed by the sheer numbers of traitor Astartes being wounded by the warp-tainted blade and becoming ill from the first time in his life. Surrounded, the Khan may have died had he not been rescued by Sanguinius, who pulled his brother back to a waiting aircraft and withdrawing back into the palace. The Khan's raid had other purposes, however, uncovering intelligence that the Dark Mechanicum were constructing siege engines around the palace. Following the fall of the Lion's Gate, the situation for the Loyalists worsened drastically. During a panic command meeting, Jagadi Khan flew into a rage when he heard General Saul Norberin and Militant Colonel Clement Braun bemoaning the helplessness of the situation. The Khan rejected the two from the Bob Bastion, something Dorn later regretted and saw as unnecessary. Not wanting to be bound to Dorn's purely defensive strategy, the Khan lobbied for a rapid assault to retake Lion's Gate. Dorn allowed Jagadi a degree of autonomy in an attempt to control him during the battle. During the battle for the Clossy Gate, Khan led a 300 strong jet bike assault against the Death Guard besiegers. before quickly turning around and withdrawing back to their defenses. Alongside Blood Angels Captain Roll Doran, Custodes Captain General Constantine Valder, and Marshal Aldana Agath, Jagadi succeeded in holding the Colossi Gate against the Death Guard, Thousand Sons, and Demonic Assault. After traitor forces penetrated the murky and exultant walls, the Loyalist war effort seemed doomed. However, it was then that Jagadi Khan announced his intent to retake the Lion's Gate spaceport to not only slow the flow of traitor reinforcements on the planet, but also allow for Goleman to easily land his own forces once he arrived. An exhausted Rogel Dorn did not protest, and Khan led a massive assault of White Scars and Terran First Armored alongside the Sky Fortress. During the height of the fighting, Jagadi Khan began uh, to come to blows with his brother, Mortorian. Faced with Mortorian's new demonic endurance and strength, Khan was brutally beaten down and nearly defenseless. However, he was able to find a weakness in the Death Lord with his pride. Jagadi Khan scolded Mortorian for his weak and giving into the powers of the warp, while he himself had resisted the temptations of chaos and remained true to the Emperor. 
Mertorian flew into a rage which Khan took advantage of to launch a second wave of dizzying attacks that overwhelmed the Primarch. In the end, the badly wounded Jagadi Khan was impaled with the blade of Mertorian's scythe, but simply pulled his body alongside its strength to get face to face with Death Guard Primarch. The loyalist Primarch decapitated Mertorian, who was banished into the warp in a massive explosion similar to that of, vortex, of a vortex weapon. Later, the Khan's nearly dead body was discovered by Isla Revalian and Jagasi Khan, who sought to take him to Malkador. After the heresy, Khan went on to lead the White Scars in a great scoring. During the campaign to conquer the Yasin sector, Khan came into conflict with both traitors and Dark Eldar raiders. During the Battle of Corsival V against the mighty Dark Eldar Lord, it was reported that Khan was lost within the webway during the pursuit of the Xenos. Hello everyone, and I hope you're all having a great day. I just want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, One United Brand. One United Brand is the latest clothing line specializing in clothing and accessories for both men and women. Please check them out at www.oneunitedbrand.org. Again, that website is www.oneunitedbrand.org. Just go ahead and click the link in the description. Thank you again for all your love and continued support. This is Travis J, and I'm out. Peace.